I can remember the first time I met uh, Dr. Haas. Uh, Dr. Hibbard had me in for an interview, and he took me into the, it was then President Haas's office, and uh, Dr. Hibbard said, uh, I'm going to hire this young man as an assistant. And uh, Dr. Haas said, oh, are you doing the hiring now? I had met him uh, when I was a graduate student at UWM. Uh, we served on a search and screen committee together there for a, one of the chancellors at, at UW-Milwaukee. And from my point of view as a, uh, as a graduate student, he was bigger than life. He was a chancellor and he was bigger than life. Uh, and when I came to Eau Claire, uh, I actually ended up attending some staff meetings in the, that the chancellor chaired. And he remembered me and I was just amazed uh, at that. One day I went into his office uh, for a meeting with him and he said, Charlie, there is a rosette missing from the plaque for Schofield Hall. Well, I was about probably in my late 20s. I didn't know what a rosette was. <laughs> so first of all, I looked up the word rosette and then I looked at the plaques and in Schofield Hall and sure enough, one was missing. It's that kind of detail, uh, attention to uh, detail uh, and the demand for excellence uh, that I think uh, characterized uh, Leonard. I think one of the most important things that he uh, oversaw, and that was the transition from a primarily teacher preparation college to a regional comprehensive liberal arts university. And um, I think a, a lot of that was driven by his belief in a broad education, including the liberal arts. I think he always felt that uh, it was important that students have a breadth of education so that as they moved into a changing society and world, they would be willing, able to adapt to that situation. I came uh, during the, the big growth period. I arrived in 1965. Uh, there were 125 new, new and additional faculty uh, that fall. I, uh, I believe that he wanted to um, create a comprehensive university uh, and not only comprehensive in nature uh, but with one theme and that's excellence. He demanded excellence in everything uh, that he was involved with. Obviously many of our graduates have become leaders in this this community and beyond. And uh, I think that's in large, due in large part to the quality of education that they're receiving here. Leonard was uh, respected by the Board of Regents, his fellow chancellors, the faculty, the staff, the students. And uh, in, in return, he was very respectful of the students and faculty and staff. I was not on the administration, but I saw an even-handedness. I had as much right to teach what I wanted to teach the way I wanted to teach within the bounds of my discipline, not within the bounds of his saying what I could teach. So there was this basic freedom that I would say, within bounds of civility, that I would say was his legacy. One day at Kent State University, Allison Krauss, Sandra Lee Scher, Jeffrey Miller, and William K. Schroeder were killed in a volley of National Guard rifle fire during a demonstration against that war. The four who died at Kent leave us in this university community no alternative. We must strike. Well, I, like everyone else, was well aware of the Kent State massacre. 
we were also all aware, as was Dr. Haas, of the upheaval, the destruction that was going on on many, many campuses all across the country. That was not going to happen on Leonard's watch. I want to convey to you again my personal conviction that only through the political processes provided in a democracy under the American Constitution can we hope to find a context in which an eventual solution is to be found. He acknowledged their frustration and he acknowledged their maturity and he treated them with maturity not as children ordering them. For almost 11 years, I have had a tremendous faith in the student body of this university. I continue to have that faith to an ever greater degree, year by year. I am confident that you believe in freedom, and that freedom exists here through an opportunity for free and open discussion where all the rights of all of the members of the campus community are respected. He seemed to see any picture as part of a whole. He seemed to see any issue as part of a, a community event. He, um, he very much cared how the community related to uh, to the university. Dr. Schnack has mentioned that uh, uh, the community is one that uh, supports the institution. The university is at the heart of the city. A student could walk to any business or government place within 15 minutes of the campus. Well, he always was very much interested in maintaining a close relationship between the university and the community. It even included his serving on the Eau Claire City Council to help cement that relationship. Leonard was a, uh, uh, a master at creating the relationship between the university and the community. Uh, that was very important to him that the people that work at the university, the faculty, uh, have a role in uh, in the, in the community, but in, in the city government as well. He really developed a stronger relationship between the community and the university. It was really his desire. His PhD was in history, and I think from that perspective, uh, he saw historically how important it was that the community and the university work together. He and Durellen were very supportive of the university. They're very supportive of the arts. I give uh, Dr. Haas a large amount of credit for the development of the music department. I think it's probably one of the best departments in the Midwest, if not the country. And it was their interest in the arts that built those kinds of programs. Well, he was deeply committed to the arts. Uh, uh, the building that's beside us, of course, is the uh, Leonard and Durell and Haas uh, Fine Arts Center, and uh, it's named that for a very good reason. Building a Fine Arts Center was one of Leonard's primary goals from the time he was a, an administrator and mo more importantly when he was president uh, of the college. Uh, he felt that music was basic to the liberal arts education. Uh, he and Durell were almost at every recital, whether it was a faculty recital or whether it was a student recital they were there, and uh, they were there as a team uh, supporting the arts. And I think if Leonard Haas was alive today and he could see what the university and the city and the county and the state and the whole community have done to create the Performing Arts Center that we are about to have, he would be very proud and he would approve. Integrity, honesty, truthfulness, um, respect, both uh, being respected, but respecting others as well. I cared a great deal about Dr. Haas, still do.